welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at audio file formats. These can be divided into high quality formats that are not compressed, high quality formats that use lossless compression, and lower quality formats that use lossy compression. In this video, we're mainly going to focus on the most popular formats. But before we turn to any of them, we need to understand some key digital audio parameters, as well as the difference between audio codecs and containers. Digital audio files provide an approximation of analog audio waveforms. And before any compression is applied, their quality is determined by two parameters known as the sample rate and the bit depth. Here, the sample rate refers to how many times a second a measurement is taken of the magnitude of the analog audio signal. A common sample rate is 44.1 kHz, which stores a digital value 44,100 times every second. 44.1 kHz is the sample rate used for audio CDs and is considered to be high quality as it equates to the capabilities of human hearing. However, the audio sample rate used in professional video is normally 48 kHz. And to reduce quality loss during production, sample rates of 88.1 and 96 kHz are common. Even 176.4 and 192 kHz are sometimes used, although these are only necessary when engaging in significant post-production. Turning to bit depth, most audio formats sample data using a method called pulse code modulation, or PCM, which allocates a fixed number of bits to represent the height of the audio wave. So, bit depth refers to the number of bits of data allocated to each sample. Here, 8-bit audio is low quality, as the magnitude of the audio wave has to be recorded on a scale that offers just 256 digital values. Stepping up, 16-bit audio provides a value range from 0 to 65535, which provides much higher quality and is the bit depth used for audio CDs and many digital audio files. However, a bit depth of 24 and even 32 is sometimes used for the highest quality. Here, 24-bit audio allocates 3 bytes to each sample to provide a sample range of 16,777,216 digital values. Meanwhile, 32-bit audio uses a floating point numerical representation that provides an excess of 10 to the power 38 amplitude levels. To fully understand digital audio files, it's important to know the difference between a codec and a container. Codec stands for coder decoder and refers to the algorithm used to digitally encode and then decode an audio file. Meanwhile, a container is a digital box or wrapper that is used to store encoded audio data and potentially other media information. Fortunately, many digital audio codecs have their own unique container. So, for example, MP3 is in effect both a codec and a container. So, if you have a file with an MP3 extension, you can be certain that it contains audio encoded with the MP3 codec. However, this is not the case for all audio formats, where in some cases the file extension indicates the container but not the codec used. So, to provide another example, the file extension M4A refers to Apple's MPEG-4 audio container, which may contain audio compressed with the ALAC or the AAC codec. As this second example indicates, not all audio file formats can be identified by their file extension, as clearly an M4A file containing ALAC compressed audio is not in the same format as an M4A file containing AAC compressed audio. And so technically, a digital audio format refers to a combination of an audio codec and a container. But in practice, both audio codecs and audio containers are very widely referred to as formats. And we just have to live with the ambiguity. Today, the preferred formats for audio recording and production are WAV and AIFF, 
both of which are almost always non-compressed. However, each format can technically contain compressed data. WAV, or the Wave Audio File Format, was created by IBM and Microsoft in 1991 and has a container with the WAV file extension. In 1997, the European Broadcasting Union created an extension to WAV called the Broadcast Wave Format, or BWF. However, the audio data is identical and many BWF files use the WAV file extension rather than BWF. AIFF, or the Audio Interchange File Format, was developed by Apple in 1988 and has a container with the AIF file extension. And, as you may imagine, it's most popular in the Apple universe. WAV, BWF and AIFF all support sample rates up to 192 kHz in up to a 32-bit float bit depth. However, not all applications and recording devices can handle the maximum specifications. For example, whilst the Tascam recorder I'm using right now can record 192 kHz WAV files, the depth is limited to 24-bit. A niche, non-compressed audio format is Direct Stream Digital, or DSD. This was released in 1999 by Sony and Philips for their Super Audio CD format. DSD abandons the pulse code modulation encoding method described earlier in this video, and which as we saw allocates 8, 16, 24 or 32 bits of data to each audio sample. Rather, in DSD, pulse density modulation is used. This allocates just one bit per sample, which is used to indicate if the current sample is higher or lower than the previous one. DSD has a sample rate of 2.8 MHz for a variant called DSD64, with other variants sampling at 5.6, 11.2 and even 22.4 MHz. DSD does offer excellent quality audio, but it's difficult to edit. And whilst DSD was developed for Super Audio CDs, these actually store data in a losslessly compressed version of DSD called Direct Stream Transfer or DST. Whilst non-compressed formats provide excellent quality, this comes at the expense of a large file size. For example, a 5 minute 44.1 kHz 16 bit WAV or AIFF file is 52.9 MB. Because of this, outside of production, most audio files are delivered and archived using compressed file formats. Some of these are lossy, as we'll look at in the next part of the video, but others are non lossy and so decrease the file size without reducing sound quality. The two dominant lossless compression formats are FLAC and ALAC. Here, FLAC is the free lossless audio codec and was released in 2001 by the non-profit Xifi.org Foundation. As the name indicates, FLAC is an audio codec, but it also has a dedicated container with the FLAC file extension. Released in 2004, ALAC is the Apple lossless audio codec and often stores its files in an M4A container. Today, both FLAC and ALAC support a sample rate up to 192 kHz and a bit depth of up to 32-bit floating point. File sizes may be up to 70% smaller than WAV or AIFF, although this does depend on the content, and here, our 5-minute 44.1 kHz 16-bit WAV file is reduced from 52.9 to 39.6 megabytes when saved in FLAC format. Other lossless compression formats are WMA Lossless, Dolby True HD, Monkeys Audio, and WAVPAC. The first of these is a lossless version of Microsoft's Windows Media Audio format, whilst the second is a lossless version of the Dolby Digital family of codecs, which we'll return to later in the video. Meanwhile, Monkey's Audio is a free, losslessly compressed format that uses the APE file extension. Monkey's Audio was released by Matthew Ashland in 2000, and he suggests we can think of it as a beefed up WinZip for your music. In a similar manner, WAVPAC notes that it acts just like a 7-zip compressor for audio files, including the preservation of all the headers and metadata, so the restored files are identical to the original. 
WAF Pack is a free and open format which uses the WV file extension and was released in 1988 by David Bryant. Finally, let's turn to lossy compression formats which sacrifice quality to reduce file size and in turn their bit rate. Bit rate is a measure of the number of bits transmitted per second and became an important consideration for digital audio files when we started streaming music over the internet. Still, the most common lossy compression format is MP3, which stands for either MPEG-1 Audio Layer 3 or MPEG-2 Audio Layer 3 or even MPEG-2.5 Audio Layer 3, depending on the codec used. As noted earlier, MP3 has its own unique container with the MP3 file extension. MP3 was largely developed by the Fraunhofer Society and dates back to 1991. In its various incarnations, MP3 supports a sampling rate of up to 48 kilohertz and a data rate of up to 320 kilobits a second. And if we save our sample 5 minute 44.1 kHz 16 bit WAV file as an MP3, as we can see, it's reduced from 52.9 to 12 megabytes as a 320 kilobits a second MP3 file. As an improvement to MP3, Advanced Audio Coding or AAC was released in 1997 and supports a sampling rate up to 96 kHz and a data rate of up to 384 kilobits a second. However, these parameters are not supported by all streaming services. AAC audio may be delivered in many containers, including AAC, M4A, M4B and M4R. Other formats with lossy compression include those from Dolby Digital, who have developed a codec called the Arc Consistency Algorithm 3, or AC3, as well as an improved version called EC3, which is also known as EAC3, Dolby Digital Plus, or DDP. For good measure, we now also have AC4, which has an improved compression efficiency, as well as Dolby True HD, which as noted earlier, has non-lossy rather than lossy compression. Other lossy compression formats include MQA, OG Vorbis, Opus and WMA. MQA, or Master Quality Authenticated, is proprietary and high resolution and has an uncertain future. In contrast, OG Vorbis is an open, non-proprietary format that uses the OGG file extension. Opus is another open format that's great for streaming and uses the OPUS native file extension. And finally here, WMA is Microsoft's Windows Media Audio, which is a less common lossy format than it used to be due to the rise of alternatives. As we've just seen, there are a great many audio file formats. So which should you choose? Well, to summarize, in production, WAV and AIFF are the go-to standards, whilst for those seeking perfect delivery quality with a reduced file size, the non-lossy compression formats FLAC and ALAC are ideal. However, for most end-user delivery, and particularly streaming, MP3 and AAC provide an acceptable bit rate and file size while still delivering decent quality. And Talking of quality, it's worth remembering that most people over 50 cannot hear, for example, the difference between a 160 and a 320 kilobits per second compressed file, because beyond the age of 50, most of us lose some of the ability to hear higher frequencies. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.